The New York Giants and New York Jets close out the 2023 preseason Saturday night at MetLife Stadium. What can we expect from both sides? I'm going to break that down with special guest Ralph Entry of Jets Country. That's coming your way next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. Good morning, everybody. This is Patricia Trainer, your host. Happy to have you with us on this Friday edition of the Locked On Giants podcast. And today's show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and sign up with the promo code Locked On to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. And on today's show, it's the Battle of New York, Gang Green versus Big Blue. And here to help me break down the Gang Green side of things, the New York Jets side of things, is good friend Ralph Ventry. He is the publisher of Jets Country over on Fan Nation, part of the SI family, which is the system, you know, Jets Nation, Giants Country, which I run. We're all one big happy family. So, Ralph, I'm so happy to have you with me this morning. It's always great to collaborate with uh, a fellow SI.com team reporter. And, uh, you know, it's Giants Jets week. We'll get this uh, for real in the regular season. So that's exciting. And I'm glad to be here with you, Patricia. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, Ralph. Ralph, let's jump right into it. We got to go, obviously, with the biggest story. The biggest story is Aaron Rodgers is going to see his first preseason action. I believe it's since 2018, obviously, his first as a New York Jet. Did the news surprise you that the, that Robert Sala decided to play Aaron Rodgers? And if, if so or if not, you know, why do you think this makes sense? It did surprise me, but then when I sat back and and really thought about it, uh, it does make sense to me. Um, this was something that Aaron Rodgers admittedly was on board with, so it's not like a, a, a one-sided decision here. This was a collaboration between Rodgers and Robert Sala, and I'm sure Nathaniel Hackett had a say in that as well, but with so many new pieces, um, it, it only makes sense to get a few live in-game reps. Um, and you can't simulate that. Uh, you can try to simulate that in practice, but there really is no substitute for it. And I, I, I really think that it's a low risk um, and there is a benefit to it. And that's why they've chosen to give Rodgers some game action um, and, and the one thing that's important, not only do they want to get that offensive line out in front of him and get, uh, the linemen familiar with his cadence, um, but then they, they, they want to introduce, uh, obviously Alan Lazard and McCall Hardman into the offense. So there are a lot of new pieces and, and to be able to get them acclimated in the type of environment that it's going to be Saturday night at MetLife Stadium. I think that was important to Robert Sala as well. Um, you know, I think the the biggest thing that he wants to get from this is to um, to to mock a, a game week, a regular season game week scenario. Um, they've adjusted their practice times to fit a regular season game week, and then. They just want to get Rodgers, the new players, the new coaches comfortable going into MetLife Stadium in that game day scenario, following the itinerary. And also, there's going to be some juice in the building just because it's Giants Jets. You know, what we formally know as the, the Snoopy Bowl, that's how far we go back, but um, uh, it, it, it's always a fun game. Uh, in the summer. So that atmosphere as well, that's going to be the closest thing that you can get to a regular season atmosphere in the preseason. So um, I think that's why Robert Sala chose 
this particular week as well as the week that they're going to have that dress rehearsal and maybe play Aaron Rodgers for for a quarter. Um, because Sala was asked, uh, how long will, will this happen for on Saturday? Will it only be one series? And, and he said no. He didn't just want to throw out Rodgers and the first teamers for one series. He wanted them to be able to come back um, to the sidelines after a possession, make their adjustments, and then go back out onto the field and run it again. So um, he, he's looking at this as just a way to get everyone's feet wet for that big Monday night opener against Buffalo. Ralph, you know, you mentioned that it's not going to be a one series and done for, for Aaron Rodgers, but here's the thing, the giants and the jets face each other in the regular season. Obviously in preseason, there's no game planning or anything like that, but to what degree do you think Nathaniel Hackett and, and the coaching staff for that matter, the entire coaching staff can keep the play calling vanilla so that it doesn't, you know, tip any tendencies or anything they might be looking to do when they do face each other for real later on in the year. You make a great point. Obviously, this year is different than most years because they 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 meet in the preseason every year, but in the regular season once every four years. So um, you definitely don't want to give away any intelligence uh, for for the meeting that that really counts on the win loss record. Um, so yeah, you, you said it, the word is vanilla and I wouldn't expect anything other than that. I just think, I don't think it's, it's about game planning and I don't think it's about offensive scheme and getting used to that. I think it's about just getting used to the game day routine with your new teammates. And I think the other thing is too, that, that cadence uh, that, that, that Rogers has, uh, getting them familiar with that and hearing it for the first time, and and even just getting a play in on the headset from uh, from it goes from Hackett to uh, Todd Downing is the pass game coordinator. I believe he's actually the one who will relay the the play into Rogers. So just to get that uh, familiarized with that connection, I think is the main goal here. And it's going to you know. I think they're just going to – they'll just run Garrett Wilson down the sideline on a nine route. You know, I don't think you're going to see anything exotic. You're not going to see anything that that would give the Giants uh, an advantage or a little bit of an advantage going into um, that October meeting. I mean, you and I know how NFL uh, coaches are, you know, usually very close to the vest and, uh, you know, very tight with that, with that type of information. You know, they don't want to uh, – give any type of edge whatsoever. Makes sense. Certainly. Now, you know, you mentioned um, they're going to try and keep it vanilla and whatnot. They also have um, the Jets. This is, there's a, been a lot of buzz around the Jets and how they potentially have a, a Super Bowl type of team. You know, they have an awesome defense, you know, Rogers uh, from all indications, it sounds like Rogers is the missing piece what has been the realistic buzz, though, around the team? How are they feeling? Do they feel like they can be a Super Bowl team? Or what are you seeing? Do you think they still need some, to settle some questions on their side? Oh, well, there are definitely questions and there are definitely unknowns uh, going into the season. Um, but as far as the whole vibe around the team, um, you know, they've been very confident since OTAs. Um, you, you've heard a number of players um, during their, their media availabilities, uh, a number of them were, are talking about Super Bowl. And, um, you know, I think uh, Rodgers and, and, and Sala as well, they've backed that up and they've said, you know, we, we, we want the high expectations. Why wouldn't you want to be in a place where there are high expectations, where, where Super Bowl um, is really the, 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 the end goal? And um, Sala said it months ago uh, that realistically every year going into an NFL season, maybe only 10 or eight or even six of, of the 32 teams have a realistic shot at, at getting Vince Lombardi's trophy. And the Jets have felt all along, ever since adding Aaron Rodgers, they've felt internally 
that they're one of those six or eight teams that uh, are are legitimate Super Bowl contenders, you know, and and the the the, the Vegas odds, the, the the they they reflect that for whatever that's worth. Uh, I think there are only five teams who are more heavily favored than the Jets um, in terms of Super Bowl odds uh, to w- to win it all. So um, obviously the Chiefs are are number one to repeat, and and that's the thing too. This this AFC terrain is 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 really tough as nails. So um, that'll be something to to watch. But uh, but as far as the questions for the Jets, obviously it's it it's that offensive line. Um, also, I think uh, now with Corey Davis having retired or stepping away from the game yesterday, uh, the receiving core doesn't look as great. I mean, Garrett Wilson at the top is sensational, and then you have two nice pieces in in Hardman and Lazard. But the, outside of Wilson, there's really no star power there. Um, so, but, 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 but the big question is really that, that offensive line, can they keep the heat off of Rogers and can they let him operate and, uh, and, and do the things that, that he does best. All right. Well, we're going to dive more into the, some of those questions in the next segment, folks, you are listening to the Locked on Giants podcast with me, Patricia Trainer, special guest, Ralph Entry, a uh, uh, Jets country over on SI's Fan Nation. We'll be right back with more as we dive into specific matchups and questions that Gang Green has right after this quick message. Hey, Giant fans, August is here, and you know what that means. The official start of Fantasy Football Drafting Month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out Best Ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you do is one live snake draft. There's no waivers and no trades. Underdog sets your best lineup every week. So go ahead, try out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. The largest fantasy football contest of all time is back and bigger than ever before with $15 million total prizes up for grabs, including an observed $3 million going to the winner. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and sign up with the promo code LOCKED ON to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code LOCKED ON. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm Patricia Tenney, your host, and I'm joined by my colleague from SI's Fan Nation. He runs the Jets Country site, Ralph Bentry. He's a veteran reporter. He's been at it probably as long as I have. So you've got a couple of old timers here on the program, but we don't look a day over, what, 30, Ralph, would you say? I mean, you know, I know I try and keep myself looking young, and I see you're trying to keep yourself looking young. So, uh, but we've been at it for a long time. So always good when we can get together, talk ball and everything like that. And uh, this weekend, of course, Giants, Jets, it's the preseason finale. It's a big game for both sides because, you know, some roster decisions need to be made. The Giants probably won't be playing their starters um, in this game. I don't anticipate we'll see their starters, but the Jets, of course, will be. And one starter I want to focus on and ask you about, Ralph, is Mekhi Becton, um, a guy who, you know, I remember when he came out, I believe he came out the same year as Andrew Thomas, and everybody was like, oh, the Jets got the better tackle. And things have kind of fallen off the rail a little bit for Mekhi Becton. Um, now he's, I guess, vying to be the starting right tackle, if I'm not mistaken. So what have you seen from him? And, you know, you also mentioned the offensive line having question marks. Where else are there concerns on that Jets offensive line? Well, the tackle spots are the, are the two big ones, uh, left and right tackle. And first left tackle, um, it was only a question mark because Dwayne Brown had been on the physically unable to perform list since the beginning of training camp uh he came back yesterday actually or was it tuesday um um I'm, it's today's thursday so as we, we, we <laughs> the days run Saturday's together game i think right i'm all, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all mixed up here the but days run together during this training camp i, I feel you <laughs> <laughs> exactly so um but dwayne brown came off the pup list this week and uh all intentions are that he'll slide right into the week one starting left tackle spot. Um, 
you know, he hasn't had a training camp. He's coming off that torn rotator cuff surgery. He played through a torn rotator cuff last year, uh, 12 games, as a matter of fact. Um, so uh, I, I, I assume everything checked out with his doctors and he's ready to go, but it's not too, uh, uh, you know, it's it's only a couple weeks here to ramp up uh, for, for Buffalo. So th- I don't know if he's 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 the utmost professional, but but is he going to be at the top of his game uh, is so soon? Um, and the other thing is, he does thir- uh, does turn thirty eight years old um, later this month, uh, I believe August thirtieth. So um, obviously, his best years are behind him. I mean, he's the consummate pro and he's reliable, but um, you know there had been some there there has to be a little bit of question there. Um, for for Dwayne Brown. And then the other side, uh, it looks like Makai Becton is going to fill that right tackle void. Um, he just began to take some right tackle reps um, in, in the recent uh, week or two, and he's going to start at right tackle on Saturday against the Giants. And it, it it's a question mark um, because you haven't seen anything from him in, in two years. Um, but as you mentioned, he was highly touted coming out of, um, of the draft. He was number 11 overall in, in, in 2020. And to be quite honest, I think he played maybe 11 or 12 games in, in 2020 or had 12 starts. Um, and he looked really good. Uh, he looked the part. He was at left tackle at that point, the blind side protector. And, and and he really did look like he was worthy of the number 11 overall selection. But that was one year, and that was 2020. And now it's 2023. And he hasn't played in a regular season game since the 2021 season opener. Um, so, and, and, and he did lose a lot of weight this offseason, and he's, he's in shape. He does look good. He he looks like he's he's winning his reps uh, in 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 the preseason game action um, that that he's had so far, and um, you know I think it's all a matter of if that right knee can hold up. He's had two surgeries on the knee; it's kept him out two full seasons. So if that knee can hold up and he can get acclimated to playing on the right side because there is a difference from right to left. Everything's kind of reversed. So if, if, if he can figure out and, and get comfortable there, you know, the, the offensive line may not be a problem after all for the Jets. Um, but then again, uh, you're only one injury away, of, of, of course, uh, but that can go for, for any team. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Makai Becton, he really has a chance here at, at, a, at a rebirth of sorts. And um, – I think he's approaching it with the right mindset. And now it's just a matter of can he physically hold up um, and, and, and do it over the course of a game. And then of course, week after week as well, you know, I mean, there's nothing like the, the rigors of the NFL season and, and not to mention, I mean, offensive line, that's a high injury rate there, you know, amongst offensive linemen. It's such a, um, it's such a physically demanding position uh, week in and week out. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But, um, you know, it, 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 it didn't look good a, a couple weeks ago, but, but the Jets' situation at offensive tackle is looking a little brighter these days. And we'll really get a good read on it Saturday. You know, we'll see how Becton is going up against, uh, well, I don't know, is he going to see Kayvon Thibodeau or – What's the plan for the Giants? Yeah, I don't think the Giants are going to play their starters. And I, I would be surprised. I mean, you might see a couple here and there, but I I think it's going to be pretty much the depth guys, you know, the Deshaun Bowers, the O'Shane Zimenezes. Those will probably be the guys. You know, the, the Giants are at a point now where they want to resolve some of these remaining question marks at the, you know, the back end of their roster. So I think that's going to be the plan. I would be very surprised if we see the starters, Brian Dable hasn't said that um, and he's not going to say it, but that would be my, my guess right now as to, as to what the plan is. So, all right. 
R- Ralph, let's let's talk. You know, you know, it, it's too early to talk matchups, but we can kind of get a preview. But you look at this Jets team against the Giants backups, and I don't know how closely you've, you've gotten into the Giants because you know it is preseason and whatnot. But what area on the team are you most interested in seeing how it plays out against the Giants? Um, I I don't want to repeat myself, but I I think it's that offensive line. Uh, that 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 that's what really um, you know. Uh, they're going to have their their starters in there for the most part. I don't think Brown will play, uh, but but they're going to have Elijah Vera Tucker at right guard, Lake and, Lake and Tomlinson at left guard, uh, Mackay Becton at right tackle, Connor McGovern at center, and. Uh, that's really going to be the first time they've had that combination in a game situation. So just to see how that goes, that that's what I'm really looking forward to. As far as position battles, um, you know, there was a position battle at running back for those for those RB two carries, um, but th- that situation got turned upside down when they brought in Dalvin Cook. Um, so now you have Dalvin Cook. Um, and Dalvin Cook nor Brees Hall will not play Saturday, uh, according to Robert Sala. So, um, but but the, so the running back situation, I don't know how much you can evaluate there um, because fifth round rookie Izzy Abanaconda, he's out as well with a thigh contusion, so he won't be playing. Um, that leaves you Michael Carter and Bam Knight. Um, so I, I don't know what the plan is there at running back, uh, but but th- that's a position battle that kind of – or, or uh, an area of the depth chart that kind of hasn't really fallen into place yet. Um, and then the Jets, it'll be the uh, the wide receiver five and wide receiver six. Uh, they have a few undrafted free agents, um, Jason Brownlee and Xavier Gibson. They're battling for, for roster spots. Um but on the defensive side, they seem set. You know, everything seems set. It looks like second-year pro Tony Adams is going to be the starting free safety next to uh, Jordan Whitehead. Um, the third linebacker spot, uh, Quan Alexander uh, was not resigned. He went to Pittsburgh. Uh, but that third, those third linebacker reps that Alexander had last year, those are going to go to Jamie and Sherwood. Um, I believe he was a 2021 draft pick, um, but they're going to Sherwood. So that third linebacker spot seems set. Um, and obviously up front, we, we we know what it is, but the the Jets, I believe, not just Rodgers and, and, and the starting offense, I, I believe the Jets intend to play all their starters across the defense as well, um, at least for a little bit on Saturday. So... All right. Well, coming up, I want to talk to you about um, some potential cuts by the Jets because it's always interesting to, you know, when you get a chance to play a team up close and personal and see them against you, some potential cuts that we might be looking for. We're going to talk about that with Ralph Entry coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast right after this. Hey, Giant fans, if you're looking for your best shave ever, then you need to check out Harry's. From their legendary high-quality razors to skincare products like exfoliating face wash and hydrating lotion, Harry's gives you a premium shave without the premium price tag, and they deliver their products straight to your door. My husband recently started using Harry's shaving products, and he loves the clean, close shave that he gets that allows him to go for days looking fresh without messing up his skin. Harry's starter set includes a five-blade German-engineered razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. And you can schedule automatic refills for as low as $2, half of what you would pay for other blades when you open an account. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry, and they're still offering a no-risk trial. Get your best shave ever this summer with Harry's razors and skincare products. Get a $13 starter set for just $3.00. When you go to harrys.com slash NFL, that's harrys.com slash NFL for a $3 starter set. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. You got me, Patricia Trena, and my special guest, Ralph Entry. He is the publisher of Jets Country over on Fan Nation, part of SI.com. 
and part of the family is Giants Country, the site that I run. And by the way, a special shout out to all my everydayers. I didn't forget about you guys and gals. I love you. Uh, I love my newcomers. So anybody who's new to the podcast, a big hello and welcome to the Lock on Giants podcast community. And of course, to my subtexters, you guys rock. Thank you so much for your support. So happy to be bringing you these shows. We have a busy week coming through. We're going straight through the weekend with lots of shows. And we're starting today, of course, with Ralph Ventry of Jets Country, who's given us a little bit of an in, inside look at the Jets, whom the Giants host on Saturday night in the preseason finale. Ralph, I always like to ask this question of, uh, of guests that are on during the preseason. Who are some of the potential roster cuts that you see that might be at positions and and I'll match the substance. I know the Giants better, but who are some potential roster cuts that maybe are going to be headliners for the Jets? And and I'm doing a little bit of a you know disclaimer. I'm doing a little bit of advanced scouting for the Giants to see if maybe they can find another Jason Pinnock like they did last year when the Jets cut him, and now Jason Pinnock going to be the Giants' starting safety this year. Well, I think it's a testament to uh, the roster that. GM Joe Douglas has built uh, with the sense that the Jets will cut players that can start or have roles on other teams. You know, the, 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 the 31 other teams are going to be looking at those Jets cuts closely and, 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 and trying to, to, to pick some hidden gems out of there because uh, the, the Jets have a, a, a lot of talent at a lot of different areas um, as far as a surprise cut or a big name veteran, um, I don't see that happening. Um, you know, Corey Davis, what was the, was the rumor at one point, although they had stood by him and said that he was going to have a role with the team in 2023. But then of course he winds up stepping away from football this week. So Corey Davis is, is no longer a, a, a surprise cut candidate. Um, but I, I think it's going to be the one of those uh, receivers, one of those undrafted receivers, either Xavier Gibson or Jason Brownlee. Maybe there's only room for one of them on the active roster, and then they have to pass through waivers. You want to get them on the practice squad, but um, obviously another team may, may, may pick them up. Um, Zonovan Knight, Bam Knight, the running back, uh, his spot may be in danger um, because you have Dalvin Cook, if, if, if Brees Hall starts the year on the active roster, um, you'll have Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, Michael Carter, um, Izzy Abanaconda, the fifth round rookie. They're not going to cut a fifth round rookie pick, um, you know, and, and he's shown well this this, this summer. Um, but but he has the thigh injury. Is he physically unable to perf perform week one? So there are a lot of moving parts there in that running back room. But they, you think they would only keep four on the active roster. Bam Knight would be the fifth. He's someone who got some experience last year um, as an undrafted rookie. And um, I'm sure he would have some uh, value to another team out there. Um, in, in terms of the, um, the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, Solomon Thomas, the defensive tackle. I, I, I've heard some rumblings about maybe getting rid of him, but I don't. I don't buy that. That's just external speculation because I think that Robert Sala loves him. Um, you know, they brought him over from San Francisco, and uh, he's a stand-up guy in the community, and he's been a serviceable option for them at defensive tackle. Um, and then they have Al Woods and and uh, Quentin Jefferson and Quentin Williams. So those are the four defensive tackles. Um, so I don't see that happening. Um, but yeah, th there are some quality players. I think tight end. Um, you know Zach Kuntz, the seventh round draft pick. Uh, he's uh, kind of a physical unicorn, um, uh, but but a raw talent. Um, he he may you know he's on the bubble. Uh, because you have you have uh, Uzama, you have Conklin, and then you have Jeremy Rucker. So Kuntz, the seventh round pick, he may be available on the waiver wire. That's somebody to look for. Um, but yeah, the, the the Jets have uh, a deep enough talent pool where 
there will be some attractive players who who are available um on Tuesday. What is it? Next Tuesday, the 29th, I think, is cut down mm-hmm. day. Yeah, definitely. And of course, cut down day that the a lot of people say, oh, the final 53, it's actually the initial 53, because there will continue to be tweaks made into the, you know, the coming days with the waiver wires and then guys getting cut again, a fresh, you know, set of waiver pickups and contract terminations. So the rosters will keep on churning as we go through, you know, the next few weeks, actually, I think it's like the first three weeks, the rosters don't really get settled until, you know, we're about and, Almost and, through September. And the Giants have done a great job in, in the last couple of years um, scouring the waiver wire, you know, whether it's Jason Pinnock, as you said, or or in season last year, they got Isaiah Hodgins mm-hmm. uh, from the Buffalo Bills. That was a great get. So mm-hmm. the, the Giants, uh, Joe Shane and Brian Dable have have done a nice job kind of uh, uh, uncovering those those hidden gems. Yeah, it's great to have competent management again uh, after after a decade of just them spinning their wheels and not knowing what direction they were trying to go in or how to get there, I should say. So that's I mean, definitely nice. Could both teams uh, make the playoffs this year, both New York teams? I mean, I, I don't think that um, we felt this good about our pro football teams around in here while. in quite some time, you know, exactly. not both at the same time. For, that's for sure. Exactly. That I mean, anything is possible. Anything's possible. I mean, I tend to border on, I, I tend to be cautiously optimistic because I don't want to put the card in front of the horse and build up false hope. But uh, I feel pretty good about what I've seen from the Giants in training camp. I'm not going to lie. So Ralph, final question for you. Um, you know, you mentioned the importance of getting the starters, you know, with Aaron Rodgers working on the cadence on defense, getting them into, you know, capping like basically a game week to get them in tune for the uh, for the start of the regular season. What else are you looking for in terms of battles, in terms of guys that you need to still see, you know, convincing, if you will, that they're a fit for this Jets team? Um. To be honest with you, um, I, I, I've seen a lot in training camp, and I, I think things are pretty set for the Jets. Um, I, I, I don't know how many um, when uh, how many jobs are going to be won or lost in the in this particular game. Um, maybe there'll be some shuffling on the depth chart, but um, you know, I think the Jets roster is pretty pretty much set, other than maybe four or five spots at the bottom, and. Um, you know, I just uh, I, I really think the thing, the key is Makai Becton again. You mentioned him earlier. How comfortable is he playing right tackle, and how well does he hold up over the course of a game? Um, you know, because that right tackle spot is uh, that that's a key for for the season. If you if you can't keep Rodgers off of his back, if you can't protect Rodgers, you know, kind of. Uh, what 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 good is he, so to speak? You know, I I would liken it to the the situation uh, later in Eli Manning's career, where you have this great quarterback who isn't getting the protection, you know, and he's he's always feeling the heat and he's always under duress. And yeah, I, I think there was that one year where maybe Eli threw seventeen interceptions, but fifteen of the seventeen, if you go back and look at the film, he's under duress. You know, so um, that that's the thing, you know, can they protect Aaron Rodgers? That's ultimately what the season will come down to, because uh, I think Rodgers is motivated, um, but he's obviously got to stay healthy. I think the defense is uh, in great shape. They brought back every key piece from the fourth ranked defense in the NFL last year. Um, so, you know, there's no reason why there should be a fall off there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think the Jets are ready to go. Uh, and this is just going to be like a, a tune up, you know, to uh, for the season as far as just um, the, the whole acclimation thing, just kind of getting in a feel uh, for for that Monday night football opener against Buffalo. All right. Well, it should be rocking on Saturday night. It always is between the two teams as they for now fight for the battle of bragging rights in New York. But the real battle, of course, coming up later in the season when these two teams meet for real 
in a, in one of their rare, you know, once every four year type meetings. And, and Ralph, we'll talk again um, before that game, I'm sure. So I want to thank you for coming on with the great insight. You do a fantastic job over on Jets Country Giant fans. If you want to learn more about the Jets, check out Ralph's work. He does a really good job. He's on top of everything and uh, just one of the real good guys in the business. I'm so happy he was able to join me on today's program. And of course, make sure you check out our Locked On hosts, you know, Johnny Butchko, who covers Locked On Jets. He was on vacation this week, so he wasn't available to come on and also add his perspective. But, um, you know, we have all our hosts. We do all 32 teams. So do check us out. Ralph, thank you so much, Giant fans. We will see you tomorrow with a special edition with Ed Valentine, a big blue view as we assess the state of the Giants roster as we head into the final preseason game. For Ralph Entry, I'm Patricia Trana. We will see you tomorrow, Giant fans.